Hello, everyone. Welcome to another live recording of the Managing Partners Podcast. My name is Kevin Daisy. I'll be your host, also the founder of Array Digital. We help law firms grow through digital marketing. Today, I actually have a really special guest, Ken Hardison. So Ken uh, has done many things in his career. Uh, he's got a great story, but also he's, he's not just here as a uh, managing partner uh, of a law firm. Uh, but he also helps law firms grow, and I'm going to let him tell his tell us more about that and all the cool things that he's doing, and all the firms that he's helping and how he's helping. So I, I've gotten to know uh, Ken by uh, reaching out to his organization. Actually, uh, they have some great events coming up, and I wanted to see how we can get involved to to attend these events and get out there. And that's what led me to invite Ken on the show, and he was kind enough to to come on today and and share some stuff with us. So. Ken, thank you so much for joining me today. Oh, thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. So, uh, and Ken's actually in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, which I'm very familiar with. I'm in Virginia Beach, Virginia, uh, but we vacation down there quite often. Um, so, pr pretty familiar with that uh, that area. Uh, so, Ken, you know, I know you've done a lot of things in your career, uh, but uh, give us a little background. Uh, you know, you own your own firm. Uh, to where you are now helping firms grow. Yeah. So, you know, I, I graduated from law school in 82, went out and uh, joined up. Uh, I went solo and joined a firm in a small town called Dunn, about 10,000 people. Uh, grew it over the next 12 years, just very incrementally, 5, 10% a year, just doing yellow pages, referrals, <laughs> things like that. Yeah. What happened to yellow pages? Yeah. That's, what a, happened? Whole, that's, a, that's a whole nother story I can tell you about that. Uh, but, uh, you know, I had a pretty much a, we had a general practice. We, we, we kind of, I did a lot of PI and, and criminal and uh, some workers comp, some disability work. Uh, and what I noticed was in 92 to 94, our business started level, you know, leveling off. And then like 95, it started dipping a little bit. And I said, what the yeah. hell is going on? Valley of death. We're getting better results. We're doing that. And, uh, I had this eureka moment. I went to court one day to try a DWI. In walks Joe on crutches. I said, Joe, what happened? He said, I got T-boned by this transfer truck. I said, well, you know, we do that. He said, yeah, but I saw this lawyer on TV and I figured, you know, he must really know what he's doing if he's on TV. So I hired him. Wow. He said, well, I went and tried the case, won the case, went back to my office and told my partner, I said, we've got to change with the times. I said, you know, this is what's going on. I said, it's very clear that, you know, this is after Bates versus Arizona in the eight, late eighties. And then people started doing TV and different other things. And I said, uh, we've got to, we've got to change with the times. And they said, no, it's unprofessional. We're not going to do it. <clears throat> so a year later, later I left and took one associate and three staff and didn't have an I clue. And so I went out to other areas and got coaching from people like Dan Kennedy Jay Abraham went to other events. They had nothing to do with law. Took those <laughs> ideas and brought them into the law practice. Went out and borrowed everything I could borrow. Uh, went on TV, did a lot of different things. Uh, actually, we, we did 32 different things to to manage our firm. But in five, wow. year, five years, we went from two lawyers, three staff, to 13 lawyers and 47 staff. So phenomenal growth. That's uh, impressive. Yeah. And... Uh, did that and then in like 2007 2008 i started thinking about you know uh I, i'm an entrepreneur at heart I, I like to build stuff but once i get it built i get bored <laughs> I, I, i'm not a great manager i know how to manage but i hate doing it i, I think i'm more of a leader and a, an ideal guy Very and similar, I, yeah. <laughs> and I, so I sold it in 2010 and was moved down to myrtle beach from raleigh north carolina and uh was going to retire and because I love playing golf and I love fishing. So I said, this is a great place to go near my, still near my mother who was living at the time. Uh, it was two hour drive. So I could still be near my family. Uh, went crazy after about six months. I said, there's so much golf and, and stuff, you know, and, uh, and I started this thing called PILMA, Personal Injury Lawyers Marketing Management Association. Cause lawyers would call me all the time and say, Ken, you know, how'd you do this? You know, and they wanted to pick my brain. And, and my wife said, Ken, you need to start charging these people. She says, because you've got a lot. She said, think about how much money that you lost in trying different things that didn't work. 
you mm-hmm. know. But I mean, it all worked out because the things that it did work, I hit home runs. I, I was either like a home run guy or a strikeout guy. I was, uh, I was, <laughs> I, I didn't hit many doubles or singles. I, I, I either went, I went for the fence every time, everything I ever did. Uh, I love it. Yeah, well, that's that's my nature. Um, well, real quick too, uh, everyone listening and tuning in, uh, down at the bottom of your screen, or if you're on the podcast, uh, pilma.org. That's p i l m m a dot org. If you want to check out. Um, Ken's organization, and as you're listening to this, go ahead and take a look at that and see what he's all about. So yeah. go ahead, Ken. So, so we created this thing, Personal Injury Lawyers Marketing Management Association, and basically we're just here to try to help lawyers grow their practices and avoid some of the mistakes I made and learn from each other. And uh, we have, you know, two levels of membership. We've got one level where it's uh, where we do a magazine. We do monthly intake trainings because – I have found that's where the most leakage is in any law firm I've ever been. I, d- I used to do a lot of consulting. I don't do as much now. Is that would be the number one place where lawyers were losing money. They spend all this money on marketing. And I know you've seen this, Kevin. You probably had clients who said, oh, I'm just not getting any cases. I'm just not getting any cases. And they won't check. They're getting the leads, but they just ain't doing anything with them. But, you know, they wait five hours to answer an inquiry on, online. You know, and that and the deal is you gotta you got to be – You've got three minutes, five minutes top to answer inquiry online. You've got to answer that phone on the second ring. You've got to have, and if you don't have, if on the weekends, it don't matter when it is. If you don't, somebody else will, I promise you, because it's very competitive market. Very, very, 100%. All, over, all over. It's the most competitive market there is out there, in my opinion, uh, as far as for law law firms, is, is PI. Uh, and, and very competitive. And, and the reason is, is, is it's very lucrative. I mean, how, you do it on contingency. How uh, how else can you go make a million dollar fee uh, for just, you know, the same amount of hours that you might work to get a ten thousand dollar fee? I mean, you know. But you know, you take chances. That's the whole contingency deal. Sometimes you lose. If you yep. pick them right, you don't. But anyway, we we took that up. We started doing events. Uh, we do a monthly magazine. We do intake training. We have a marketing roundtable for marketing directors. We have a management roundtable for. Uh, managing partners and managing, you know, uh, whether you're big enough to have a law firm administrator or CEO or just an office manager. But we've got people that are solos. We've got people that are doing 70, 80 million dollars a year. It, it's various. I also run masterminds. I got three levels. I got, oh, law wow. firms, yeah, I got law firms that are doing under two million, law firms are doing two to 10 and law firms are doing 10 over. And the reason I did that is like you have different, problems different challenges at different stages in your growth and uh, yeah when i found under two million they just want cases when people first come to pill must i just won't figure out how to get but then you know you got to be careful what you wish for because we actually teach you how to get cases and and then what how are you going to handle all this stuff how are you going to get the people how are you going to hire how are you going to the infrastructure how are you going to scale it that becomes the big problem uh you know scalability and then uh that's why I went and I got certified as a scaling up coach with Vern Harnish, who's going to be our yeah. keynote speaker, who wrote Rockefeller Habits, Scaling Up. He just wrote a new book called Scaling Up Compensation. Um, yep. And Founder and of an uh, entrepreneur's organization, very well known. Yeah, yeah EOS. Uh, we're part of that group, actually, uh, oh, yeah. as a, from a business owner. But yeah, Vern is, is amazing. Yeah. So he, he's sort of like another one of my mentors. Um, and it's really helped, uh, especially for the law. It's helped me with with dealing with the larger law firms. Um, yeah, and then I also got certified as a John Maxwell uh, leadership coach because you say, "Why do I do all this?" I'm I'm a type of guy. I'm an entrepreneur, but I also I'm a continual learner. I don't think you ever know it all. If you do, you, you if you figure you know it all, you're in trouble. <laughs> or, or if you're the smartest guy in the room, you're in trouble too. I promise you. So I, I, I'm very humble in that I know a lot, probably more than 98% of lawyers out there on marketing management, but there's still a lot I don't know. And I'm always trying to learn more. And it's always a, always a changing world, right? So it is. You got to yeah. adapt. You gotta well, adapt. I want to back up a few things right there just for everyone listening. Uh, a couple of things that you said that I picked up on. Um, one, that a law firm is a business just like any other. I, I own a marketing agency, but it's a business. I'm an entrepreneur. I own multiple businesses, but you got to figure out how to run a business. And I think a lot of attorneys, for one, or most attorneys, they don't know how to run a business. They go in to do it for practicing law. 
Uh, most of them care about that mostly. They hang around with other lawyers and bar associations and stuff like that. But you got to get familiar with running a business. You have to go somewhere to learn from somebody because they don't teach you in law school how to run a business um, unless there's a school I'm not familiar with yet. But and that's the biggest problem that I see. The other thing is when we go into, you know, to market for a, a uh, law firm. The first thing we do do is how are you currently getting leads? Is those sources working when a form comes in or a phone call comes in? What's happening? Because that's the first thing that we try to fix is internal issues potentially that are going to weigh on us or, hey, we're, you're getting leads or maybe the old agency you had was doing a good job and you guys are just dropping the ball somewhere. Yeah. And uh, so we can get some really quick success by just fixing a couple things, communicating with po folks in internally and saying, hey, you, you got a problem here. And one of those leads for a, um, a PI case, they might not wait a day or two for you to respond. They've already taught someone else at this point. Oh, they're going to. You know, it, 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 it's such a big deal, um, Kevin, that all my mastermind members, they get two. I call them, you call them mystery shoppers. I call them ghost calls where we do one online inquiry and one like a, like a, a mystery shopper, a fake uh, yeah, yeah. person that's been in her, in a wreck or something. And we record it and we grade them and we send it to the, the managing partners for them to listen to. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah. In, fa in fact, I started a whole company, another company I got is called lawyers, ghost calls.com. And we do that. We do, we, we mystery shop, we grade them out. We, we, we record the deal and then send you the recording plus the grade and uh, tell you what you need to do to improve it. And that's the kind of things we look at this stuff. And then we got Chris that Mullins. Genius. So I Chris love that. Mullins, yeah. Chris Mullins, who's known as the, the sales phone doctor, she does our monthly trainings and she takes these things and she listens to them. She says, okay. And she uses those as teaching modules. Uh, I also created a whole, certification course for intake people uh, where you have to go through and, and take tests. And then you go to the next module and the next module because it is, it is, I saw so much. I've had law firms. I had a law firm that was spending $2 million a year on TV and their, and their, and it was their, their intakes were going down and they couldn't understand why. And I went and I did like 10 ghost calls and, 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 I, and I played them for the managing partners. They had three of them. There was three partners, uh, and the managing partner got physically sick and went to the bathroom and threw up because he knew he knew what I he knew. knew. Oh my gosh! Yeah, he said <laughs> he, he said this is the problem. And, and but lawyers, a lot of them, they just want to stick their head in the sand because they, and they always tell me that they sign up every case they want, and it's just not true. They might personally sign up every case they want, but they don't talk to every potential client. I can promise you. And no, you know, I mean if you're a managing partner with a lot of staff, there's no way you're doing that, right? No, you might hand select a couple that you want to work on, but yeah, you know, the so managing partner shouldn't be taking on that many cases compared to other attorneys. Yeah. But that's always, that's always been a big deal and you got to have systems for follow up. You can't give up. I mean, lawyers that just say, okay, I'm worried about sending a letter. So they know that they know that I'm not representing them. That's not the way you need to be thinking. You need to be, you, you need to have, it's, it's, it's competitive out there. You've got to, uh, you know, I, I like to do it with education. Different lawyers do it different ways. I, I think the more you tell, the more you sell without selling. Uh, I'm real big on books. I wrote like seven consumer books. Excellent. Uh, that I used for lead magnets and, and to put out in doctor's offices. And, uh, oh my stuff, like, stuff, stuff like the seven fatal mistakes accident victims make in North Carolina. The, non, the nine myths of a worker's cop claim. Uh, disability secrets revealed how to double your chances of winning your disability case, things like that. And, uh, you know, uh, are most, those all available on your website? Off the uh, website? If, if you're a member, you can license them. Uh, okay. Uh, well, it's exclusive. It's market exclusive, only one per market, but I've got some markets. I got two or three books that I license. Uh, but I tell people, you know, do it yourself if you can, you know, but the other, the other big problem I see Kevin is, uh, and this happens every time we go, we have this big conference and I'll have people, I got 30 things, I got 40 things to do, ideas. <laughs> and then they go back and they get started and they get busy and nothing gets done. So I think the key to success is, is these two things, uh, focus and discipline. 
And you say, what, what are you talking about? Because implementation is the key. And you can't implement if you don't have the discipline to quit jumping at that next shiny object or get distracted by something else. You know, it, the way way I, way I teach it is you want to do quarterly planning, not annual planning. Mm. Yeah, I, I do uh, like five main things I want to get done next year. But really, every quarter we pick two or three projects. We lay it out. What does it take? What tasks have got to be done to get this done? Who's going to do them? They agree to do them. We put dead, uh, deadlines on them. We use a, a, a free project management software that you can get. You can, there's a lot of them out there for free. We put it in there. We hold people accountable. And we focus on those two or three things. And then when we get through with those, then we go to the next quarter and we work. What we found was that you'll get four or five more things, times more things done. Absolutely. You stay, you stay more focused. You, it, but it's all about focus and discipline. Listen, you can have the 20 greatest ideas in the world how to get cases. <laughs> but if you don't implement them, they're just pipe dreams, right? Well, and yeah, it's too big of a list of things to accomplish, right? And so yeah. so I, I follow the book uh, Traction. Yeah. Uh, or EOS is a good way, um, but those would be called rocks. So those are your quarterly rocks. Yeah. And um, we set those for my my team. We have quarterly rocks. We we go through and say, hey, where are we? Each week we have a leadership meeting. Where are we at accomplishing these rocks this quarter? And these are moving us towards our goal, either this year, five years, or your BHAG, your big goals, right? Yeah. All that should uh, you know contribute. Yeah. And then we start making future rocks. Okay, what's what's a future rock that we can't get to now, but we want to get to later? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so very, great advice right there, because I think everyone's like, yeah, I got all these ideas, all these big things they want to do. And then they get back, they get busy, they work on their work, and they don't do any of it. Yeah. They go to Pilma, the, the super um, summit, yeah. with this whole list of stuff, and they don't do any of it. They don't implement it. Yeah, I tell everybody right at the beginning, I said, 90% of you are going to go back with greatest intentions that you're going to kill the world, you know, rule the world. I said, but 90% of you are not going to do anything. I said, there'll be 5 or 10% of you that will do it. I said, so be that 10%. I mean, be that 10%. Um, you know, because that's the ones that become, they. you know, the cream rises to the top. And there's not, listen, I'm not. <laughs> I was not valedictorian in high school. I mean, I was law review, but I wanted the top 10 in my class. I, I just made it in by skin of my teeth. Uh, I, I'm not the smartest guy, but I get stuff done. In fact, I'm working on a book. I've written several books, and I'm going to tell all of you. There's a couple of books out there you need to read, and, and, and this is going to be my – you need to read the e myth I'm writing them down Michael, right now. e by Michael Gerber. I, I have read that. My business partners read that. Everyone listening, listen to Ken. E myth, if you're a law firm, especially, 100% need to read that book. Yeah. Sorry. I wrote, Go ahead. I read, I read that in 96. It was a game. That and Joe walking in the courtroom were my two aha moments <laughs> in my life. No, really. But the second one I would tell you to read is, is I'm, I'm plugging myself, is I wrote a book called Under Promise and Never Deliver. And, and that's ready. the way I always tried to. Every business I ever ran, I've always tried to run it that way, whether my law firm or Pilma. And, and what I talk about is there's three uh, phases of marketing a law firm. Actually, and then it's before representation, which everybody does, which is kind of what we did, what you do. Then, then during representation, when you want to try to turn them into Raven fans, give them great client service, hmm. get the case done on time, return the calls, da da da. And then the third phase. About 50% of law firms do that. And then the third phase is after representation, which only about 10% of law firms even pay attention to. But that uh, nurturing that past clients can mm. create so many referrals. Listen, I was spending $1.52 million a year advertising back in Raleigh, and I was yep. signing up a couple hundred cases a month. But 42% of my cases still came from old clients. Not lawyers, old clients, not doctors, old clients. But I did a lot of things, and that's the kind of the stuff we teach at Pilma, is how to do this. Because let's just face it, you cannot afford to get into TV now. The barrier is so great. Unless yeah. you've got spend, willing to spend one to three million dollars a month. Um, I mean, in most, in a lot of the big markets, uh, you got to be in the top three. 
and that and to get into the top three in most markets is just it's not it's not doable uh or if yeah. it is doable no lawyer wants to take that big a risk because <laughs> it takes so much time now when i did it i was very fortunate first day i went on tv i started getting cases now it takes six months to a year to really to get in to where people really recognize you and start calling you on a regular basis the the wait time and then you got another wait time for your case to mature so you can take you two or three years yeah. that's and, a big and, investment for a long time yeah and so a lot of people could go broke in between because the one reason business that don't survive is undercapitalization right yep we know that uh, you know it's uh Bernard Harnish says that he says uh you can get by with average people you can get you can get by with average you know leadership you know, but let me tell you, uh, when, it, when, it, when the cash, if you ain't got cash flow, it's over, game over. Because, I mean, that's just it. Um, that's it. And, uh, you know, you mentioned, uh, I think, with your business back in the 90s, um, is what I think Vern Harnish would call like the valleys of death. Yeah. So you plateau, you, something happens, you lose, you know, and I think, you know, the, the team or processes that got you where you are ain't going to get you to where you yeah. need to go. And that's usually what the one, five, 10, 15 million, you're going to have these drops. You're going to have experience these, these issues that you have to fix internally to be able to come back up. And if you don't have enough cash to get you through that, you're out of business. Yep. Game over. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's, um, yeah. And, and, and the whole big deal, I mean, it's like things change. You have to adapt. Like when you get to 40 employees, you have to rearrange things. When you get 80 employees, you have to rearrange things. When you get about 120, 160, you got to rearrange. You have it's a constant battle, man. It's a you know what I'm right now. We got 25 employees, and we literally, yeah. you know, I, I like I love some of my team members, and they've been with us for a while. But um, you know, yeah. a, a lot of are being either they want to leave or they're they're leaving because they have to. Um, but I know it's for the better. Um, it's just something we have to deal with. And I love all of them, but if they're not the right fit here, you know, we've, so we've had to go through that. We've, we've got a, a fresh new crew, project managers, operations yeah. director. Um, but I, I'm excited for the other side of it and where we're going to go. So, yeah. Yeah. But, but, you know, the whole deal is the reason I started Pilma is because it was nothing like that for me. I mean, no, there wasn't. It was nobody's going to share. Nobody in their market's going to tell you what's working, what's not working, because they don't want you. You know, you're, you're competitors. Yeah. You're, you're, and I understand that. But, but with this, you know, the way I've got it set up, especially with the masterminds, they share, and they're trying to help each other out, and it can save you thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars, uh, of trying something that somebody else has already tried and says, "Listen, this don't work," and I know because I tried it. Uh, knowing, knowing which vendors to use because you know mm -hmm. as good as i do there's some uh digital companies out there they got more salespeople than they do people actually doing the work <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not gonna say who it is but yeah you, you probably know who i'm talking about there's so oh, I, I know and we've actually gone the opposite so we are no salespeople and just just straight up marketing and good work and that's we've tried the sales game many times and uh, we don't want to do that we don't want to call ken and say hey ken you we need to redo your website or yeah, whatever. It's we're yeah. we're all marketing, and if you don't want to work with us, then that's that's fine. Yeah. Um, but we're not going to bang on your door and your phone and say yeah. you need to work with us. Well, see, yeah. the lawyers don't like that. I, nobody really likes nobody likes to be sold to, but everybody likes to buy. But I think the deal is, uh, you know, it's like the film. I tell people when they're talking to me about joining, I said I'm probably not a good salesperson. Uh, I said because. <laughs> Everything we do, everything we do is money back guaranteed because I tell people we don't deserve you better if we don't help you. Uh, yeah. And and people look at me like I'm crazy, but <laughs> I made I made I made a lot of money. I, I own like we talking about an entrepreneur. I, I own like twelve corporations, so I've got I got partners in different things. I've got uh, I'm in the golf business. I got golf balls and, and the company. I got a golf club company. I got a hangover drug company. I got. Uh, I'm in a mass torch big. You know, oh, wow. I've, I've sold two law firms. I didn't tell you about the other law firm I started. After I sold my first one, I was at an event, and the lawyer said, but listen, Ken, this all sounds great, but you, you went out and borrowed a half a million dollars. I don't have the ability to borrow that. I said, well, how much could you raise a month? 
<laughs> he said about six thousand dollars. I said, I'm gonna take your challenge. I'm gonna go start a law firm and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. And I took six thousand dollars a month. And in two years, I built up a social security practice in Myrtle Beach that had seven hundred clients. Wow. Uh, and and I sold it because I really didn't want to do it anyway. It You're was really, proving a point. <laughs> I was proving a point. I'm I'm a very competitive guy. I'm a very I like challenges. And yeah. I just want to see if I could do it, to be honest with you. I didn't know I could. I felt like I could. But, I mean, it really stretched me on figuring out how to get cases uh, very economically, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, Well, uh, yeah, it's getting to take what you've learned and, and put it into practice. And I think that's a good case study. Uh, not to, you know, So this is a, another company I own. It's called Rival Digital, uh, HVAC space, HVAC companies. And um, we started that with one client hired a president, said, hey, here's our playbook. And a lot of the people that you've learned from, Vern and all those, like we've, we're very similar, E-Myth, all that stuff. Um, so you're preaching to the choir here. But we started that and had a goal to make, do a million in revenue, recurring revenue, contract revenue in one year. And we got to about three quarters of a million. Um, and now we'll probably be at one and a half, two million in the second year. And that's with... I think they have three employees. Um, and so that's great. It yeah, took yeah. my first company uh, 10 years to get to a million in revenue. And now it's just like, all right, let's see if we can do this with everything we've learned. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And so, yeah, it's it's just fun to do. Um, and we don't we're hands off with that company completely. We don't even do anything, but yeah. we still own it. Yeah, it was crazy when I was growing my law. I, I grew up probably way too fast, to be honest with you, looking back, but <laughs> because it did create cash flow problems, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not going to lie and say it was all easy. It wasn't. It was hard as hell. Yeah. But, but, but we went from like a half a million in revenues to uh, like $6 million in revenues in like five years, uh, which is amazing. I've seen, guys, I've seen guys grow. I just talking to a Pilma member yesterday that's the mastermind in Orlando. He joined Pilma. Mm -hmm. Three and a half, four years ago, he was doing one million a year. He said he did five million last year. He did one million in January. He's killing it. But, that, but, but listen, he did. I didn't do it. He did it. Okay. He, he, he called me up to thank me, actually. And I said, listen, <laughs> I, just, I, just, I just led you to the water. You drunk it, man. You, it's all about you because that's the difference maker. You can have all, you know, like I said, all the ideas in the world, but you got to have the focus and the discipline to get it done. And, and the ones that do are the ones that are successful. And you don't have to kill yourself. I used to kill them. I used to think if I could outwork people. I used to work <laughs> 80 hours. Uh, listen, I used, back when I was building my firm, back those five years, 80 hour weeks, man. 80 hour weeks. Yeah. When I when I quit that, I said, screw this. I said, you know, and I and I hired and this is the other thing I'm gonna tell you, another book I got. Is, I'm writing uh, all these books down, by the way. <laughs> the, the five dysfunctions of a team by Patrick Lassioni. What was uh, the name he, of that again? Sorry. The five dysfunctions of a team. Five dysfunctions. Okay. By Patrick Lassione. He's written a lot of books. Also, he picked, he wrote a book about how to pick an A player. Because here's the other key to it. <clears throat> what I've learned the hard way is that nobody got real successful by themselves. You've always had really great people surrounding yourself with. And, and the deal is, don't be cheap. Go out and get A players. And, and you can't fill your whole firm with A players, but you need to fill your key positions, what I call the inner circle. You know, like mm. you, the people that are in leadership roles, they need to be A players because you might have to pay them 25, 50% more than your competitors to get them. But, yeah. but they're going to do two and a half to three times more than a B player. So really you're coming out ahead if you look at it from investment and it's going to make your life so friggin' more easier because then you can just delegate and not worry. You know, do you give it to somebody that you don't have to wait, stay awake at night wondering whether or not they're taking care of it for you. I've been very blessed and I know my weaknesses and I, <laughs> one of my weaknesses, I hate management. When I say I like leadership and there's a big difference, right? Yeah. Yeah. I always have really strong managers that were really good at making, making sure that they manage the people. Uh, I'm terrible at technology. I always hire people that were really technology savvy that could teach me, you know, I mean, I know what you're supposed to do, but if you, but I know about SEO, I know about links, I know about content, and, but if you ask me if I had to go code a damn website, we, we'd all be in trouble, <laughs> but I ain't supposed to, right? It's like, uh, yeah. they were interviewing you and who was it? Henry Ford one day, the paper was, they said, 
you're supposed to be the smartest guy in the world, all this, that, uh, and they asked him a question. He said, I don't know. He said, you're supposed to be, he said, listen, I don't have to be the smartest guy. He said, I, I hire people. He said, I got this phone here. Anything you ask me, I can, I can pick up the phone. Which yep. would be like picking up your cell phone now, but back then, I can pick well, up actually, the he had buttons on his desk that he could press, yeah. right? Yeah. I can just press this button. I can get you to answer. Why do I need to know everything? You know? So, uh, I mean, that's, that's the key. It. Work work smarter, not harder. And when you're hiring people, uh, here's the definition of a player. They're, they're, they're confident, but they're humble. You don't want, you don't want arrogant assholes working for you. Now they're a terrorist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they're going to run off your good help. Uh, and then number two is you want people that are hungry, but not just hungry for money, hungry to grow individually and become more tomorrow than they are today. And then the last thing is to be people smart and people smart means being able to communicate people with people, uh, have a filter on, but yet be honest with people. Well, all I'm saying is the, the great things of having a, one of the biggest dysfunctions of a team is that they can't communicate. They can't be honest with each other. They're scared. They're going to top on each other's toes. There's a way, of, there's a way of doing it where you can do it respectfully and professionally and still agree to disagree. I, I tell all my staff, we just got through with our quarterly planning meeting, Kevin, and uh, I fly all my, we're, all, we're very virtual. All over yeah, the United States, here. but I fly them in once a quarter. When we do a quarterly planning meeting, and I fly them in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's because the airports are easier to get in and out. And I told everyone I'm right to start with two things. I said right at the beginning of the meeting. I said number one is if you ever get up in the morning and you don't look forward to coming to work with us, let me know and I'll help you find a job that you are happy because I want you to be happy. Life's too short. You got to be happy. You know, and, and the, yeah, I mean, and and, and number two is. I welcome disagreement. Challenge me. You know, don't agree. I don't want a bunch of yes people. I want people to challenge me and say, have you thought of this? Because you guys are in the trenches. You know it better than I know. Right? And that's uh -huh. what you need. You need to be getting feedback from your from your line workers because they know more than you know about what really the hell is going on with your law firm. I promise you. I, I love all of that. And we're... <laughs> We're, we're like perfect together. Um, all these things that I've learned and, and learned from others. And I think a big takeaway from this, this whole segment here, anyone listening is that people have already figured a lot of this stuff out. Go talk to people, read books, join Pilma, find a mastermind. Um, you're going to be way behind if you're just trying to learn all this on your own. Yeah. When someone like Ken or others have already figured it out. Now you have to implement but they can tell you exactly what to do or what didn't work at least. Right. Um, and absolutely with, the, with the, the communication, you have to have an open uh, communication with your team. We had a company meeting this morning. We have a quick, we have a daily huddle every morning with yeah. the whole team. They're all virtual for the most part. Um, but me and my business partner don't come on those every day. We show up on Wednesdays and give any company news or say stuff. But one of my things of the day was, just because I've seen some issues with um, coming from my operations director, but it's okay to say if someone like my operations director might say, Hey guys, I need you to do this or Hey you, I need you to do this or fix that. Um, it's okay to say, Hey, I don't understand what you mean, or I don't know how to do that. Or I need help with that. A lot of the team has recently been like, um, okay. And then they go and they mess it up and it's not what they expected. And then the, the manager's not happy. And thinks that they can't do their job. And I'm like, wait a minute, there's that's a really good employee, right? What's the problem? And I think, you know, with with new managers in place, they're just trying to be like, oh, I'm perfect. I can go do this. And say, hey, it's okay to say, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Or yeah. I don't understand what you meant by that. Instead of just secretly walking off and, and going, oh, crap, what am I going to do? Yeah. You know, I always tell people there's no such thing as a stupid question. The stupid people that don't ask questions. I really believe that. I mean, I really believe that because the people are scared to ask questions because they think you're stupid. They think you'll think they're stupid. I try to reinforce that with my team, everybody. Listen, and I ask sometimes I ask questions that they would somebody would think, "The hell's wrong with that?" <laughs> Ken, you ought to know that. You know, I, said, I don't know what I don't know, right? You know, I, I told you yeah. I'm not. I, I don't claim to know it all, and uh, so yeah, I mean that that that's the deal. I mean, it's uh... I love a, a lot of good takeaways here. Um, and just from experience, too, and this is everyone listening, uh, obviously, you go check out Pilma.org, um, his organization. But 
masterminds in general, join a group of people that you can talk with. And even what's even better. And so I've been, you know, entrepreneurs organization, which is uh Vern Harnish, uh, his group in that you're going to have, it's a mastermind. You get in private forums where you can discuss things in private and you have NDAs with each other, which is great. Yep. But everyone in the room is different. They don't own law firms. Uh, what's awesome about a niche agents or a mastermind is the power that comes from being in a group of, of others that own the same type of business. And so I, if, if you can go to a mastermind and you're a law firm, you, you choose something like this. Pilma is something worth because it's so much more powerful than, you know, EO uh, is great and it's, it's localized. So you get to hang out with people local, but they also, you know, some, a guy might own a construction company, uh, yeah. completely different issues than I have. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm still been, I'm, I've been in masterminds for 20 years with different yeah. other type of entrepreneurs, but I've been doing the Pilma masterminds for over 13 years. And wow. uh, yeah. And uh, the thing I love about it is market exclusive. So you can be, you have a free flow of ideas. In, in fact, I just wrote a new book. My latest book I wrote, Ken, uh, Kevin is uh, it's called the mastermind effect. How to 10 times the, the secret. I can't remember the title. Oh, it's so new. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I, just got it, I just got it on Amazon. Here it is. Yeah, I'm writing it down. I'm writing all your books down. So yeah, the mastermind effect. The law firm. The mastermind owner, effect. Uh, owners to secret. Uh, owners secret to ten times growth. And I actually got some case studies in there because of people who joined the mastermind and what it did for them. But I, I talk about the history of where how mastermind started with Napoleon Hill. You know, Firestones, yeah. Andrew Carnegie, and then I talk Thank about you grow rich. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. And then what is what's the concept? How does it work? What makes it successful? One, and then the fact that there's different ones out there. There's a lot of there's a lot of people out there now claiming to have a mastermind, and it's not. It's a master class, or it's yeah. the, you can't have a mastermind with 200 people in it. Okay, that's just not <laughs> a mastermind. I mean, my masterminds are are, are, are limited to 18 law firms from different markets or different states so that they can't, you know, and they have to sign a, a non-disclosure agreement. And, and, you know, we get in there and we dig in the weeds for two days, three times a year. And then we do, I've started doing a monthly because of the pandemic. Then we do a monthly two or three hour call where people can kind of, I got this issue came up. I need help. Da, 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 da. Sure. Yeah. We, you know, and we have our own little list serve and, Things, Everybody can it, kind of pitch in on what to do yeah. about the, the situation. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, but it, yeah, this book I wrote it. I wrote it because there's just so many people out there claiming to run masterminds, and 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 and, and I didn't say this, but one of my mentors he said, "Ken, you're the you're the father of legal masterminds." He said, "You started. I started them actually in 2005, believe it or not." Oh wow! Uh, yeah, but but it was a very loose group of guys. Uh, I, I, I wish I knew about masterminds back then. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been I've been in a mastermind for like like I said over twenty years. Uh, I've been I'm in one right now with a bunch. I got a guy that coaches uh, musicians. I got a guy that coaches dentists. I got a coach. I got that coaches uh, optometrists. So we're all coaches. Oh, okay, we're, okay. And, coaches mastermind. And, 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 and you know we run these same kind of businesses where we're trying to help professionals or business owners grow their business and. Uh, so we share ideas. We meet. We only meet twice a year, uh, but we we spend a couple of days, and we sh we bring stuff. Play a little know. golf. Yeah, play a little Maybe golf. Maybe some fishing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually uh, we, the last one we did. Uh, well, the one before we did in Key West, and I I took all the groups out that wanted to go on a fishing charter. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and so we. I'm taking. I'll be in Palm Beach next week. I'm taking my wife uh, on a charter. Fishing. Yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. We 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 slayed them, man. We uh, that's yeah, awesome. So we do well, yeah, we go to we did, we go to neat places too. Like we the last three we done Vail, Key West, and San Diego. The next one's going to be in New York, and after that it's going to be in the Bahamas. So we go to really, we go to really great places. So I, I say it's a good way to ride off a vacation. You, you, know, <laughs> you know, you go there beaten for two days and then you can stay another three or four days and <laughs> with your family or whatever your loved ones and, 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 and you know write it off but, yeah. well Kim man I really appreciate you coming on today and, and sharing uh, a lot of takeaways uh, for my attorneys listening to this episode um, a lot of you may know Ken or be part of his program um, I just got familiar with it myself um, 
So I'm, I'm excited about it. I hope to go to uh, the Super Summit coming up soon. Uh, you go to the website. You can find out more about that and, and the events and the, the whole group and stuff like that. Uh, Ken, anything else you want to share before we? No, we just, you got, you got any, anything that you want to know, just the info at pilma.org. That's uh, P-I-L-M-M-A dot O-R-G. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I've got some books in Amazon. I've got some books on our website. Uh, we've got we got a lot. We got a free resources. I mean, I still believe in giving. I got a whole re free resources uh, part of our website. Just got gobs and gobs of stuff. Even if you don't want to join or whatever, it, you ought to take it. You ought to go to look at it because it's it's good stuff uh, that we uh, you know we keep putting fresh content up there every. Because my SEO guy told me to. No, no, we put, <laughs> we, no, we, no we put fresh content there just because I, you know, I want people to keep coming back, right? So. Oh, yeah. We, we change it about, you know, every six weeks. We put a, one or two new things on there. That's great. Good for SEO, of course. Um, yeah, but then, you is. know, it's just, uh, we do the same thing. We'll, we'll evaluate a, a law firm and tell them exactly what they need to do. And then they might take that and use do it themselves, or they might give it to their agency and they'll do it. Um, we're, we, we don't care. It's if, if they want us to do it and they feel good about it, that's great. But if not, um, you know, it's fine. It's free information. Uh, they might help themselves. They might come back later, but um, we're not scared to give out free information either. So I think that's um, important to do. And yeah, go check out the website. It's, it's full of information, <clears throat> but I would encourage everyone, an attorney, join a mastermind, whether it's Ken's or not. But uh, I agree. If you want, I agree. I tell if you want to be, <laughs> and I think, if, but if you really want to crush it, join a, a niche or a law related mastermind. But I would take a look at hard, a hard look at Ken's and uh, what he's done. <clears throat> Learn from people that have already done it, so you, you'll get where you want to go a lot faster. Yep, and a lot cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot, yeah. You're saving money. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Ken, thank you so much. I, mean, I could talk to you all day, um, but I do have a meeting coming up soon. But uh, I love what you had to share. We have the same ideas, um, read from the same people, and uh, everyone. Uh, if you're listening it's not, it, there's a good reason for that. You know, these folks that we've learned from, um, listened to, um, it's, it's the right, I mean, they've done it and they've, they've got the processes in place. Yeah. So, um, now it's all about implementation, right? So you can read a million books, uh, but are you going to apply anything from it? Yeah. Um, so that, I think that's the big takeaway too is, you got to implement something. So if it's just one thing, go to, go to super summit, pick one thing that you learned and do that when you get back, you know, yep. that'll pay for the whole thing. So. Absolutely. And, and also offer a money back guarantee after the first day, if you go there, I'll give you that plus $500 to get you back home. Awesome. Uh, well, I'm looking, I'm going to be buying my ticket, but we'll talk backstage in a minute and um, talk more about that. But yeah, check out the super summit, check out Pilma and you guys have a great day. Um, Ken, thank you so much. Check thank out this you. episode. It'll be up on our website soon. We have almost uh, live already. We've we've probably done 250 managing partner interviews. Uh, we have almost 200 on the website. You can sort by state, by practice area, and hear other managing partners share how they're running their firms, marketing, operations. We have it all on there. Free library, free resource. Uh, we also have the managing partners newsletter, which goes out twice a week. We also feature books from our guests. So Ken, I got a whole stack, of, a list that we can get out to our uh, users. We have about 1,500 managing partners on our list, uh, but we give out marketing tips. We feature guest episodes like this. And then we also have our book club and podcast by our guests that will be out. So Ken will be featuring you out on that, but uh, raylaw.com forward slash podcast. And then if you need help, Implementing some of these things, SEO, websites, marketing, advertising, in a way that actually works, reach out to us, arraylaw.com. Happy to talk to you, give you free guidance if you don't want to hire us. Um, and uh, we're happy to ask any questions you got. So that's it for us. Ken, thank, thank you, you so friend. much, sir. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk soon. I'll see you backstage. Everyone.